Yeah, that's a tuna. Yeah. Oh. Get in there, bro. Yeah! <laughs> Welcome back to the ocean everyone. Now today we've got a pretty decent forecast so we're going to head out and do a bit of jigging in the morning and then see how the day plays out. Despite the mill pond conditions in close, it was a bit lumpier out wider. I did a few drops jigging over the pins and didn't twine much. That being said, there were a lot of fish underneath the boat so I put the camera under to see what was going on. With huge stacks of sign on the bottom, I just had to drop the camera right down on the rod to see what was going on. As we head down, we come upon a massive school of butterfly perch. And as we touch down, a school of fish that I've never seen before. Not only is it one fish, it's a big school of them. Now I've never seen this fish down in this area before and I actually don't know the name of it. It has quite significant white tail and has a really large eye for the size of the fish. If any of you had any ideas on what this could be, leave a comment. With water so clean, we can see what the bottom's like in the area I usually jig for kingfish. Just these great big boulders and it's holding quite a lot of butterfly perch which are just milling over the top of it. Check out how far the vis extends as I wind up. Back on the surface, I make the call to head out wider as there's no kingfish really holding in the area. With such good vis in close, there could be albacore tuna on the cards. On the way out to the tuna grounds, I spot a couple marks in 50 metres and drop a jig down onto it. With the line angling up, it turns out to just be a cup of wine. With a few fish hanging about, I decided to drop down a ledger rig underneath the camera. Off in the distance, you'll see a couple of trevally coming in, and it looks to me like they're going to begin feeding. This is a rare look at how Trevally feed on the bottom. They look like cows grazing in the sand. This gives us some insight into how Trevally typically feed. Up on the surface, I've just seen a bright silver fish jump out of the water. I 
I frantically began casting the little lure and even had a tuna follow me to the boat. Turn her under the boat. I couldn't get them to bite while casting, so I quickly got my tackle box out and set to putting a couple of divers onto my rods. I headed towards the splashing and hoped that I would be able to finally hook one. And just like that, it was all pandemonium with one rod getting hit and me scrambling to get the other one out of the way. Now both of them were hooked up. Yeah, that's a tuna! That's a tuna! Did I drop it? Ah, oh, he's still there. Other rods in the way. Just have to deal with it. Did he come off? No, 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 no. No, he's still there. Oh god. Chaos. Hopefully, he just toes me away from the other line. Finally, I can't, I can't clear that other rod at the moment. It's just gonna have to. Hang on, no, I'm sorting it. I had two of them. Keep the weight on, Blair. In all that chaos, I'd managed to lose my railblazer flag at the back too. That's a tuna. That's an LB. It's coming out. Woo! Look at that thing go! Not even in 20 degrees, it's 19.9. And look, bear eyes right there. Tuna happened to be here. And it's on the old favorite lure, the Strike Pro. I'm gonna play him nice and light. Don't actually know how big he is. He looked like a fairly good one. There he is. Is it an Albie or a Skippy? Albacore. Get in there, bro. Yeah! <laughs> yes. Yes. Finally fing did it. Yeah boy. This is Squiddy calling from Bear Island off a kayak. Just landed a tuna. Right guys, I didn't think I was ever gonna be able to complete this one. I've put in a lot of hours of trolling out wide and I put the anchor down in 45 meters and I had tuna jumping so I put the lures out and by some miracle I can't believe I've done it I've done the east coast albacore off my home beach look at that that makes me so happy honestly the toughest day yesterday and even tougher today, I have got nothing in the back. Um, and even though it's a little one, I do not care. There's more tuna out there as well. We're in a really good area, lots of fish around. 
um, they just happen to be here and that's really it. So uh, we'll, we'll get a couple of picks, chuck the lures back out and uh, hopefully grab another couple if we're lucky. Oh mate, look at that thing. Finally. Just a little one, but... Right, so update. Did a bit of trolling. We only came upon that one little school and we actually got a double out of it, which was pretty awesome. We're gonna leave a lure in the other rod and we're gonna do a few drops out here in 70 odd meters. We just wanna get a gurnard or a snapper or something to take home. And after dropping a little Sanaku down, I was hooked up. Man, it's been a tough day. Nothing really going on on the bottom and We've only really just got a first real hook up on a jig. Drifting along. What are we gonna get? That's what I want. And I will certainly be netting it. The next hookup came soon after. We're starting to get into them now. Second fish. Ooh, come on, be a good snapper. Wow. That pulls, he shakes. Whoa. fish. I did have a little tap earlier and didn't get it but this one grabbed it and was going nowhere. My guess is a snapper. A bit of kick to it. I've only got him up to 45 now. Can we go back down? No. Yes. Big tail kicks. Right, 20 meters. Had a few good runs out of him on the bottom. Should see him in a second. There he is. What is it? Snap. Yeah, looks that way. It looks like a good one. It looks like a really good one. <laughs> yes. That makes the day. That makes my day. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, he's got weight. Well, the day goes from quite shit to incredible. And now, I don't believe this, we've just picked up a massive, well, pretty massive for out here, I gotta say. By far the biggest snapper I have ever caught out here. It's not even close how big this fish is. Corner of the mouth, Sanaku slams another one. Yeah boy. Mid 50s. Awesome. Almost a 10 pounder. And that, honestly, 
is epic. Right, give you a bit of a look at this fish. Excellent, excellent. Let's get our jig back down there and uh, pick up a few more fish, eh? Right after we'd landed that snapper, I saw more tuna jumping. So it was back to trolling to try and tick off another one. The fish on there is the tuna scoop. They won't follow it in. Since this fish had barely run since I hooked it, I kept the drag low, waiting for that burst of speed. Pretty sure they're Albies. This one's done nothing at all. And it's bigger. There he goes. You can catch 10 on a boat for every one of these on a kayak, so. There he is. It's number two. Here's our number two. It wasn't a fluke. Awesome. Sweet as. With albacore, it's really important to get all the blood out of the meat before eating. A quick stab above the pectoral fin usually does the trick. It was getting on into the afternoon, so I decided with quite a bit of fish in the back already, we'd start heading home, and it would be quite a big paddle. As I was packing up, something quite big turned up below the kayak. Hello. Is he going to have a bite? Wow, look at that thing. That's cool. Didn't mind, I just bumped him. You gonna have a bite? He can, is he gonna have a go? What's he doing? Little shit. Come back. I'll give you a piece of tuna. Yeah, look. Woohoo. You'll smell this. Oh, you smelt it. Go on, eat it. Ah, oh. you're gonna wait. Go on, eat it. <laughs> oh, he's eating it. Oi, don't bite my rudder, you dipshit. 
That's my rudder. Oi, get out of it. <laughs> Oi, over here. This one. Why are you biting the rudder? There's food here, man. Get out of it. Here. Go on, eat that. I'm gonna eat it now. No, it doesn't want it. Stop biting my rudder, man. There's nothing to eat there. I want him to come up and eat one right next to the boat. Eat that. Come on. Oh, he's gonna go straight up and eat it. Nom. <laughs> he's gonna follow me now. Oh, don't eat my rudder. You don't need to eat that. Don't need to eat my rudder. Oi, get out of it. Don't eat it. I'm watching you. After the closest encounter I've ever had with a Marco, we headed back to shore. I want this one. How's that? How's that? Right, so team, we're here at the filleting bench and I've got a few special things to show you today. Now uh, we'll just start with the big one. We managed to tick the albacore off the kayak, off Hawke's Bay. I doubt it's ever been done before. And here it is. Haven't weighed them yet, but uh, we'll do in a moment. We also doubled up. So that's two lovely albacore fat coke bottles. And we even managed to sneak in my biggest ever snapper. We keep upgrading them every time we go out. So uh, biggest ever snapper off Waimatama, that is. And I would say about three and a half, four kilos. Very happy with that fish for out here. 
I also did snag a few gurnard. Nothing really big this time, just sort of late 30s eaters. So yeah, pretty happy with how the day went after all of the struggle during the middle of the day. And um, we'll get to filleting. And right before that, I will go grab the scales and we will weigh these fish. Okay, I'm back with the scales. I think these tuna are probably going to be around that three kilo mark-ish. Maybe a little bit under. Yeah, 2.8 kilos for that one. Yeah, that one's a little bit lighter, 2.5. So, not the biggest fish. They get a lot bigger than that. I was right. Just under 5 kilos. 4.8 kilos. That's solid. Really solid. Very, very happy with that. I was about spot on with the guesses. Right, we'll rip into these tuna. And then we'll get onto the snapper. pretty good Ooh. well what a video that turned out to be we're going to end it there you know where to go if you want to support on the patreon thanks to mike again for his continued support and i'll see you all in seven days for more crazy action